If you are to consider any English that deviates from uh, general American English or a white American English, if you, if you consider that to be improper or broken, you would be telling British people that you are not speaking English correctly because you are not sounding just like me. Why don't you tell British people that, huh? Mm? Mm? Why don't you tell Scottish people that, huh? Mm? Australian people? Mm -hmm. You don't go and tell them that their way of speaking is wrong, huh? No, you don't because you respect their culture and you respect their language or you respect their dialect. Wow, you're stupid. Those countries have their own standardized dialect just like the United States does. So no, no one would go there and tell them that they're speaking incorrectly. Ebonics is not standardized. What's up YouTube? There's a video by Philogy Noir called Ebonics is not improper English. It's a fairly old video, but it discusses Ebonics and so and I also want us to discuss Ebonics on this channel, so let's get into it. How many times have you been told that the way that you speak is improper English? Zero. I've been told that actually zero times. That's not to say that I'm not proficiently fluent in both English and Ebonics, but I know when it's appropriate to speak Ebonics and when it's appropriate to speak English and I separate the two. Or that Ebonics is actually just broken English or garbage altogether. Well, I'm here to tell you that African American vernacular English or however the hell you want to refer to it is just as valid as any other language and or dialect. Yeah, but it it is broken English. You can't exactly get mad at people for saying it's broken English when it that's exactly what it is. Sure, it's a valid dialect of English, Ebonics, but it's not standard English. Fact of the matter is we are educated in the United States in standard American English and we are expected to be able to speak it, write it, and read it with a high degree of efficiency. What's up my beautiful black babies and welcome to another episode of Lash Noir. Now in today's episode we are going to be talking about African American vernacular English and how basically because of white supremacy and racism and anti-blackness and everything rolled up into one, the way in which we speak is deemed as improper or broken English or considered to be outright garbage. Stop with the victimization of yourselves, black people, please. Please. No? Okay. But like I said, as far as with African American vernacular English is, it's very racist because when we speak our own language, if, when we use our own dialect, I will go into the differences between a dialect and a language in one second. When we use our own native tongue, we are automatically cast aside as ghetto or just a slew of other negative attributes. You know, we aren't really taken seriously if we use African American vernacular English in certain social situations. It is very much a form of oppression because black people find themselves having to do what's called code switch which is basically switching in and out of african-american vernacular english and general american english come on now everybody's code switch is not just black people everybody has to do it because everybody experiences life in different situations sometimes you're in a formal situation sometimes you're in an informal situation and you speak appropriately for the situation that's what most people do black people tend, and I'm saying all, but black people tend to not cold switch because they have a poor grasp of English so they can't really do it. And they sound like fools. Too. That's how they're perceived. As fools or thugs or whatever you want to call it. I hear black people trying to cold switch all the time. You see it on the news all the time when they're being interviewed by white news reporters and you could say they're cooning for the white man or whatever you might assume that they're doing. But I, I believe that they're really just trying to sound, they're, they're trying to code switch and sound like they should on TV, like they should on a news, uh, on a news broadcast. But a lot of them have a really hard time doing that. And it's not just black people. Uh, here's an example of a white girl with the same issue. It's for your dad. It's in the hospital. He's getting surgery. He needs a smile. I'm going to be a whole much better if. I can keep this car for him. I can already tell you're smart. But I saw one example that said that basically, if two people of two different cultures are talking to one another and they can't understand each other at all, then it's said that they are speaking two separate languages. But if two people are talking to each other in their own languages or their own dialects and they can kind of pick up 
on what the other person is saying they can kind of get the gist of what they're saying like certain words and phrases then it said that they're speaking two different dialects of the same language no i don't agree with that definition spanish speakers can get the gist of what italian speakers and portuguese speakers are saying and those are those are three different languages but mandarin speakers and cantonese speakers are both speaking a dialect of chinese but they can't understand each other orally at all. They can written, but sometimes uh, to a certain extent, but they cannot understand each other when they're speaking. So that definition you gave was too vague anyway. The fact is black people have no real political power anywhere. And it comes at the end of the day, what's a language and what's a dialect of a language is comes down to politics and there's not a single successful black country out there. You could argue for some, but I, I wouldn't. If you want Ebonics to be the national language of a country. Within my research, I really found that basically the difference between a dialect and the difference between a language is that a language is just a dialect with an army. Speech patterns are considered languages when they are backed and supported um, by those in power, by those who have authority over a certain society or a certain country or a certain general region, by those with wealth and money, so, so power, you know? So basically, if racism, if the hierarchy of racism was reversed, if there was um, black supremacy and white people were the ones who suffered from racism, then you bet you African American vernacular English would be the official language of the U.S. If you, if you, if black people managed to start a government and a sovereign state, go ahead and set Ebonics as the national language, but it will still be classified as English. It's not that different. I mean, people can understand you very well. Not even they can understand you. A, a person speaking standard English can understand a person speaking Ebonics better, way better than a person speaking Spanish can understand a person speaking Italian. It's as simple as that. They're very similar languages. Is Ebonics a dialect? Yes. Is it a valid dialect? I mean, what do you mean by valid? Valid, I wouldn't even say valid is the right word to describe a dialect be it Ebonics or any other dialect. Should it be considered its own language? No, it's not different enough from English. 